using the GPIO pins, using Scratch 3.0 on our Raspberry Pi. But now let's take a look at Python. Now, for those that aren't comfortable with text coding, um, or you're thinking, oh my gosh, I can't do this, take a deep breath, you can. And actually what you're gonna start to find out is over time, Python coding, text coding, is so much easier and smoother and easier to control once you get the hang of it. So uh, just bear with me, believe in yourself, and uh, let's go ahead and do what we just did, blinking an LED on and off, but instead of using Scratch, we're gonna use Python. So we're gonna go up here to the Raspberry, and in here, we're going to go to programming. Now there are some different things that we can use. We're not gonna be using Java this time, uh, but we're gonna drop down here to this Python IDE for beginners. Uh, it's a very friendly, forgiving um, programming interface for us to use and uh, it allows us to run some things just to see how things are going to operate. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to go through all the things of Python, just enough to get you started with this beginner code. So the first thing that we need to do is we're going to need to import a library um, and when I say that is Python is already preloaded to do many things once you understand what code that you're to be able to type and use. But sometimes we need what are called uh, libraries and libraries are nothing more than a collection of functions that a program can use. So someone has already created a bunch of code. And we can use that. We don't have to reinvent the wheel all the time. And I think this is a, a misconception among many. And we think we get into text coding or whatever that we have to start completely from scratch. It's just not the way the world works. So what we're going to do is we're going to import a library. And the way that we do that is we're going to type in from. Okay. And the library we're going to type in is GPIO0. This is going to allow us to actually code and access the GPIO pins on our Raspberry Pi. Without this library, Python doesn't, can't communicate to the GPIO pins. All right, and we're going to go ahead and just add these commands here. So what we've got here is we're going to import LED. Um, so the library, just this one part from the GPIO series to import the LED so we can program and work with the LEDs that are plugged into the GPIO pins. So once we have that, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move on here to our, our next line. And we're going to also import a time library so we can control time. So we're gonna bring in from time and we're gonna import the sleep part of this as well. And so you can see that we've got these things here um, as we get rocking and rolling. Um, with our, our program here. So next, what we want to do is we're going to create a variable. And we need to let our program know what GPIO pin our LED light is connected to. So I'm going to call this LED. You could call this whatever. Um, sometimes if I'm using a series of lights, I like to call it by its color if I have like one of each color. I've done that for a Christmas ornament, you know, where it's put its LED, I could say it's blue and just so I know. But for now, just so you can see, I'm going to call it LED. And I'm then going to identify what pin my LED is on. So it needs to know, the program needs to know that. So anytime in my program from here on out, I type in LED, it knows that I'm referencing GPIO pin 16 for that particular set of code. You know, I could write another one. I don't only have one LED right now, but I could say LED2 and I can make that another pin and the same type of thing. So this is just helping set up the code to be much smoother as we start to do things. And so then what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna write a very simple code, very similar to actually what we just did in our Scratch program. So while true, this is now creating a, a infinite loop, so to speak. And what's going to happen, you're going to see this indent. See how it automatically indented? So think of it like with the Scratch 3.0 where the blocks clicked within the forever loop, right? They clicked in. They were, they were technically indented within that forever block. Same thing is happening right here. 
And so what we're going to do is we're going to say LED on. Okay. And then I'm going to sleep for one. Then we're going to turn the LED off. And then sleep for one. So as we look at this here, this very first program, we have a code that when we run it, our, our light's going to turn on, and it's going to stay that way for one second. Okay, we imported the sleep command. Then we're going to turn it off for one second, and we have it as while true, which means it's, it's a forever. It's always going to be true. We have nothing to kick it out of this loop here. So it's going to blink on and off forever. So when we go to run this, we should see this happen on our LED light. Let's take a look. And so before we do that, obviously we need to save this. So I'm going to call this one LED blink. You can call it whatever you want to call it. It does not matter to me. And I'm just going to stick this. Hmm. I'm going to create a new one here. I'm just going to call this Python Programs. There we go. So I'm going to put this in here, my Python programs. I'm going to hit OK. And now we should have success. Let's take a look. All right, my friends, you did it. You just coded some simple Python programming, nothing to it. So let's take a look, uh, go back to the slides um, that you can access here. The links are in the, in the show notes. And, and take a look at some of these other challenges, and, and let's see what we can do here. Music